Um, okay, last week we didn't learn. Um, and two weeks ago, I think we did learn. Whatever. Okay. Well, page page Chav Zayin, page 90 at the bottom. On the top, it's page Chav Zayin. Okay. In Parakhof Aleph, or Parakhof in 20 and 21, Al Kareb was explaining that when Hashem created the world with speech, okay, and the Torah says Hashem spoke, so obviously God doesn't have a mouth, so we learned already at great length that it's an analogy, just like speech is a revelation of something con con concealed. Hashem's speech is also the revelation of something concealed, which means Hashem had the power to create light, it was hidden. Hashem said, let there be light, and light became created. So it got revealed. But then the Alter Rebbe in Perkhopal said, but there's a big difference between God's speech and our speech. When God, when we speak, the words leave us. You can tape it, you can record it. You can't take back your words after you say them. Like we said then the expression, before you speak, you control your words. After you speak, your words control you. You can't take it back. You said it's too late. So he says, L'chayr, it's not a good moshe. Because by Hashem, he, the words never leave him. So how can we liken the words that we're saying Hashem's speech to our speech when there's really no connection between the two? And, and al Rebbe is explaining now in this Parakh of Aleph, and this we figure out where we should start from, um, that the whole difference is only as far as we're concerned. Okay? Um, just trying to think where we should start. We didn't finish. Okay, let's start on top of Chav Zayin, second line from the top. I'll go through it quickly, and then we'll get to the place we're up to, because it's the middle of here. Okay, the Kacha Mamish Derech Moshul, so it is by Hashem. Yuchedes Diburi Machshavte Shalakadish Baruchu, the speech and thought of Hashem is united with Hashem, with the ultimate level of unity, with the essence of God. Even after God's speech came out, and He actually created the worlds with it. But it still never left God because God's all over. So there isn't a place where God left. So therefore, it's not something out of God. Not, when we speak, our words are out of us. Right? We said you could record it and that's it. But when it by Hashem, there's no such thing. Nothing ever leaves him. Therefore, um, even after the words come out of Hashem's mouth into actuality. Rabbi Yisraelim is in creation of the world. The same exact way. Before God spoke, the words were part of Hashem. Exactly the same way, the words, even after he spoke, never left Hashem. There is no difference. Ela ela bruim, to the creation. Hamakablam chayusam. That get their life and their existence. From Hashem's speech. When it left into action. In creation of the world. That addresses in them to give them life. All of the shame from cause to effect. I'll explain this whole thing. It comes down in a very limited way. And again, a lot of this we learned already, so I went through it quickly. Hashem created the world. That speech, like we learned many times, is the existence of the world. Without, If God's word would leave for a second, like we discussed many times about Shem, what the Medrash says, and about Shem to have elaborated on it, the world would become nothing again, zilch, as if it never was. Not that it was here and you erased it, you could tell it was once here. It was never here. 
But nevertheless, from Hashem's perspective, it never left him. It's still part of him because there is nothing out of him. It's just from our perspective, from our perspective, God is hidden. And to give you a simple physical analogy of this, if I hide behind the curtain, I am not hidden from myself. I am only hidden from you. I'm only hidden from you, you can't see me. As far as I am concerned, as far as me, my being, there is no difference if there's a curtain or there is no curtain. The only difference is for you, if there's no curtain, you see me. If there is a curtain, you don't see me. And the same thing is by Hashem. And I'll explain why it's even more so by Hashem. There isn't a place God doesn't exist. Nevertheless, if God would be revealed as he is in his infinite power, you would, Hashem Kaviachal would not be able to create a finite world. When in unlimited infinite is revealed, then all you're going to have is infinite. You can't create a finite world from infinite. So now the question is, how does Hashem create a finite world? He wants a dira b'tachtainim. Hashem wants a finite world. How does Hashem do it? Hashem limits himself and covers himself and covers himself and covers himself to such an extent, eventually when you look at him, you don't even see the light at all. But that's only from our perspective. Hashem's perspective is no difference at all. In other words, if you have a light on the table, okay, and you cover it with one cover, you'll see a little light. Covered with a hundred covers, as far as you're concerned, there is no light there. But from the light perspective, the light didn't change. The light is the same light. The only question is, do you see it or don't you see it? So in that respect, Hashem's creation is not like our creation. And in Perak Chavez, al says, so, so why are we calling it Dibur? Why are we calling it speech? It's not speech. Speech leaves him, leaves us, and God by God it doesn't live. But what Hashem's what Al Rebbe is explaining over here is <clears throat> that when Hashem limited himself <clears throat> to create worlds, and he made the symptom concealment, contraction, concealment after concealment after concealment, is for one sake only. For people not to send godliness. But from Hashem's perspective, he's still revealed in that object. Because if Hashem wasn't revealed in that object, the object couldn't exist. Now, what's unique, and I don't, I'm not getting into it now, <clears throat> when we learn Shai Yechud Amunah, we'll learn it at great length. The difference is, I can be hidden by a cover, by a blanket, because the blanket is not me. There's a rule, it's called in Hasidic language, ein etzem master al etzem. You cannot cover yourself with yourself because it's still you. If I, you know, people play with kids, you can't see me. Okay, they put their hands in front of that, you can't see me. The truth is above my it's an incomplete statement. It's wrong statement. It's incorrect. But my hand is also me. I can't say you can't see me because my hand is also me. I could say you can't see my eyes. So my eyes are one thing, my hand is something else. And the eyes and the hand are two different things. So if the hand covers the eyes, you don't see the eyes. But the hand is also part of me. Therefore, there's an interesting halach in Shechonarach. If somebody wants to make a bracha, <clears throat> and only per bracha does then apply. And they don't have a keeper. They don't have a yamukah. They cannot take their hand, their own hand, and cover their head and make a bracha. Why? Because you have to be covered, and you're not covered because it's your hand. 
somebody else's hand could be put on my head and I can make a bracha because that's not me anymore. So when I hide behind the curtain, it's easily understood. Why am I covered? Because the curtain is not me and therefore not me is covering me. The problem is by Hashem, there's nothing that's not Hashem. Hashem hu alikim. Elokim refers to the concealment of God. Hashem refers to the revelation of God. Hashem hu alikim. So Elokim is also God. So the question is, Hashem conceals himself, what we're learning here, to all these contractions, concealments, and limitations, which is the name of Elokim. Now, how can God be covered? He's covering himself with himself because there is nothing else but God. So how can Hashem be covered if he's covering himself with himself? So a lot of Shari Yichud Vamuna talks about that. The bottom line is, again, we're not discussing it now, but just to bring out that point. Now, Rebbe says later, just like you cannot understand God's infinite power, we cannot understand God's finite concealment power. And basically, God is covering himself with himself that from our perspective, he's completely covered, even though he's not. Or to use a nice one-liner, the concept of Simpson means, and we can't understand this, God is where he isn't. That's what it means. And we learn Shaykh of Amun, when they will get there, I don't know when, but then we'll learn that what, what that means, which we can't understand, by the way. We can say words but we can't understand it. So here the Alter Rebbe is saying that speech of Hashem is not like our speech because our speech leaves us. It's not us anymore. Hashem's speech is still him. It's still, and, and the only reason why Hashem is covering himself is that world shouldn't become nullified because if infinite God is revealed in a world, you can't have a finite world. Because only infinite is revealed. You can't finite infinite. You can't limit unlimited. And therefore, all these contractual limitations. has to him as a concealment of God. To conceal and to hide all of the revelations from Hashem. That it shouldn't be revealed in such a great revelation, that the lower world wouldn't be able to ha- handle it. In other words, let me explain another 101. So, this 101. We know there's four worlds. Okay. Atsilis is the higher, Bria, Yitzira, Asiya. Atsilis has more godliness than Bria, which has more godliness than Yitzira, which has more godliness than Asiya. Which means Atzilis is holier than Bria, which is holier than Yitzira, which is holier than Asir. Yeah. That is only Dal Treb is saying over here from our perspective. Because Atzilis is one type of a covering. Okay. Bria, Hashem adds like a curtain. Yitzira, another curtain. Asiya, another curtain. But again, that's only from our perspective. From our perspective, Atsilis is higher than Bria, than Yitzira, than Asiya. But as far as Hashem is concerned, if you, are, if you are hiding and there's 10 curtains or one curtain, is there any change in you? No. The only question is, how much the other people can see you? If there's 10 curtains, they can see you less than if there's five. And if there's five, they can see you less than if there's one. But again, the difference is not from Hashem's perspective. From Hashem's perspective, there's no difference. Ain't right means there's no Atsilas, there's no Bria, there's no Yitzira, there's no Asiya, there's only God. Ain't right there's nothing but God. 
Not that there's no other God. But the Rebbe says in the whole Shaykh of Amunah, and there's one of the unique teachings of Chassidus. Ein Eid Mulvade doesn't mean there's no other God. We say in Eleni, you should know today that God is God in the heavens above and the earth below. Ein Eid. Simply means, Ein Eid, there's no other God. But the Rebbe says, no, that's not what it means. Ein Eid, there is nothing but God. The only existence is, but that's from Hashem's perspective. Hashem wanted that from our perspective, it should not be like that. We should not see God. Why? Not only because if we don't see God, if we see God, we're going to plot, we're going to, infinite is going to cannot create finite. Hashem has more than that in plan. Hashem wants us to find him. Ganeiden, where there's a revelation of godliness. When the Shamas find God, big deal. God is revealed, so they find it. It's not what Dira Betachtainen, when Hashem, like we discussed the other week, the whole purpose of creation is hide and go seek. Hashem hid from us, not from himself. Hashem says, I want, this is my enjoyment. Aiva, Nisava. Hashem, you know what I want? I want you not to be aware of me and I want you to find me. That's the game of light. If Hashem would reveal his infinite, that we would feel infinite and we would be infinite creations, that's not what Hashem, of course Hashem could do that. But that's not what he wants. Hashem wants, it should be a dira betachtainu. So what does Hashem do? Again, from our perspective, Hashem says, I'm hiding once, twice, a million times, a billion times, four world, each level, who knows how many things I'm, I'm hiding. Hashem says, I'm hiding. Find me. That's the game. It's called life. So, so the Altareb is explaining the only thing as far as we're concerned, okay, Lachain, therefore, it appears to the world, to us, that that the godliness that's in them. As if it's a separate entity. Because, again, it's very unique. In our world, in the world of humans, something that you don't see in the five senses, if you don't see it, hear it, smell it, touch it, what's that one? Whatever. Huh? Taste. taste. If you don't taste it, you don't see it, hear it, touch it, smell it, or taste it, it doesn't exist. So in our world, we don't see it. So in our world, we got to look for God. And by the way, that has a very interesting halachic ramification to it. If I walk into an empty room, I walk in Mamish into an empty room, and there's nothing in the room, and I say there's nothing in the room, really, I'm lying. Why? There's air, there's molecules, there's microwaves, there's who knows what. Wi-Fi, face whatever there is in the room. Yet the person's not lying. To the extent <laughs> that if a man comes over to a woman and there's an empty room, okay, the room's empty, and he says to the woman, Hare at you're betrothed to me with this ring on the condition there's nothing in the room. That woman becomes a married woman and she commits adultery, they get stoned. I mean, killed. I, what do you mean there's nothing in the room? There are, there, there's air, there's molecules, there's whatever. The answer is, in our world, if we don't see it, hear it, touch it, smell it, taste it, a packet doesn't exist. Hashem made his limitation in such a way 
that he didn't want us to see it. Why? Because, and, is, and we look at the world as if world is a separate entity. You look at the world, you don't see God. You don't. To realize there's a God in the world, you have to meditate. That was Avraham Avinu's greatness. At the age of three, he understood, Avraham Avinu understood that there's a God in the world. You look at the world, you don't see God. All you see is corruption and craziness. But even when the world was half normal, you don't look at the world and see God. You have to meditate. Why? I, I, the existence of everything is God. Without Hashem, there's no table, there's no chair, there's no tree, there's no mountain, there's no earth, there's no nothing. What do you mean? You, uh, God, you, uh, the answer is, from our perspective, we don't see it. And Hashem says, your job is to realize that there's a God and everything in the world is God. And therefore, all I have to do is serve God. And therefore, world is not a contradiction to godliness. But on the contrary, world is the vehicle to fulfill Hashem's mission of creating a dwelling place in a world that doesn't see, see him. Later on, Dr. Rebbe asks in Tanya, how could it be that lower is only when there's a higher and a lower. But if Hashem goes all over, there's no higher or lower. Again, it's from our perspective. So he said, Achla Gabe Akarish Baruch, Ancient Simpson, the Hester, the Helen, Master, Mail Nathana. Okay? And here's an interesting thing. Now, the Rebbe says, from Hashem's perspective, there is no concealment. And darkness is like light. This is a possible. Listen to this possible. It's a very interesting Hasidic type definition, the interpretation. Simply it means darkness does not darken from you. And the Shiurim of Tanya, Lessons in Tanya says that the title we hear is darkness cannot darken. darken. Why? Because everything is you. Everything comes from you. Light, dark, it all comes from you. Darkness cannot even darken. Why? Because mimcha, it comes from Hashem. And it's all different by Hashem, light and dark. Because all these contractions, concealments, are not davar nifir mimenu yizbar It's not a separate entity. And here's his two interpretations. Either a snail or a turtle. It really doesn't matter because both are right. The levushim minei ubei. The garment, the, the shell of the turtle is not a covering of the turtle. It is a part of the turtle. The snail shell that the snail goes into, that you don't see it, it's part of the snail. It's not a separate entity that conceals it. The turtle shell is not something that conceals the turtle. It is the turtle. Now, the Rebbe says all these tzimtzumim, coverings of Hashem, are not really covering Hashem because they're part of Hashem. Hashem, Ho'alekim. There's no difference between the revelation and the concealment. But Shukoslik, it says, Hashem, Ho'alekim, like he's going to explain somewhere else. Um, how would they mean here? Okay, whatever. Um, like it says in another place, like it says in another place, Therefore, everything is mamish nothing. So now, Dalt Rebbe, in this parrot, because next week in Mitzvah Shem, we're going to learn. So Dalt Rebbe is basically saying like this. In Parak Chav, Dalt Rebbe gives an analogy of Hashem's speech to our speech and the connection, why they're connected. Uh, our speech is revealing something hidden. Hashem's speech is revealing something hidden. Parak Chav, Dalt Rebbe says, really, it's not the same. Because by us, it's leaves. By Hashem, it doesn't leave. To the extent, all the revelations of all the worlds, all the concealments that Hashem is concealing himself is really part of Hashem. 
So therefore, it's not something leaving Hashem, like our word. Therefore, the word of Hashem that's in the Sefer, even I look at the Sefer, I don't see God. Reality is, it's God. But Hashem made it from our perspective, we don't see it. From his perspective, we do see it. So really, there's no connection between Hashem's speech and our speech. Now the question is, and this is what Dr. Rebbe is going to answer in prayer, Chabbeid, if so, why does Hashem call his speech speech? It's not. Our speech leaves us. Hashem's speech doesn't leave him. So how could we call Hashem's speech speech if it's not? And prayer Chabbeid, Dr. Rebbe explained, because Terry speaks in the terms of humans, it is it is really speech. It is it is speech of Hashem. But then, let's finish. There's another two minutes. We learned already. There's God's perspective, and there's our perspective. Both are in Teira. We learned already in the past. There's a pasuk we say in the Haftar of Rosh Hashanah. It's a pasuk in Shmuel. Kikel dei ois Hashem. God is a God of knowledges. Exodus explains what the knowledge is. There's Das Elyein and Das Tachtin. There's God's perspective and there's our perspective. God's perspective is Lemaile Yesh, up here in Ruchnius, everything exists, and down here, nothing exists. It's nothing. Only, it's only God. There's no world. From our perspective, it's Yesh. Me, I am. We are existing. God, we got to meditate in. But it's interesting. It's a Kel Dei Hashem. These two perspectives are Hashem's perspectives. In other words, Hashem said, I'm giving you my perspective and I'm giving you your perspective. But it's my perspective I'm giving you. One is that I exist and you don't. And the other one is that you exist and I have questions. And that's the big difference. The mission will be continued next week. Everybody have a good Shabbos. Again, bring somebody to the class. And we'll see you Mitzvah Shem Monday night um, at 8 o'clock. Everybody have a good week, a good Shabbos, and all good.